Hey everyone, here we are for BMX News, a live weekly BMX news show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week in the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. Doing it live every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got some people in the chat, Robert Burris, Kevin Jackson, DFLJ. I haven't seen Taco Slurpees in a while. Here he is, Caleb Emery, what's up? Zenki TV, hello, good morning. Hi, everyone. What's up? James Ovens in London. Shout out to Robert Burris, Kevin Jackson, members in the chat. Hit the join button if you want to learn what that's about. But uh, this first thing I want to talk about today can hopefully serve as something that people find as resource up until we get to the Olympics in that we have the Olympic qualifier riders list as well as how it actually kind of works. Don't know super specifics here, but I think we got enough to get a gist for what's going on. So everything that we've seen qualifying wise for like the last three years, I guess since the last Olympics has led up to these 48 riders, 24 men, 24 women being in this qualifying series of two events that are going to get them to the Olympics. So everything else from before doesn't matter anymore all the country points all that stuff like how it was last time where the country that scored the most points got multiple riders none of that matters anymore apparently now it's 24 men competing in two different contests and the top eight results or wait, wait it's a six top 12 finishers not top eight top 12 finishers so six men and six women will be qualifying obtaining a quota for the upcoming 2024 olympic games in paris so out of 24 each six will qualify doesn't matter if they're from the same country or anything like that at least from what i gather it's just whoever does the best out of these 24 riders, which kind of feels like a better way to get a better representation of like just who's the best because these riders are all of the riders who did the best in the qualifying up to this point. And then now we're going to find the best of the best being the top six of each. So that's what we have to look forward to. with Brant's head floating. He is our BMX new overlord. That's funny. Too funny. So yeah, you can look through this list here and see who's qualifying. There's an organization by country, it looks like. And if you're in the US, we have Justin Dowell, Marcus Christopher, and Nick Bruce. Hoping that Nick and Marcus qualify. Obviously, Justin too, but Nick and Marcus are Ohio dudes. And I just think it'd be awesome to see two Ohio dudes go into the Olympics. Then on the women's side, Hannah Roberts, Paris Penegas, and Angie Marino for the U.S. and the rest of the world you can find on this list. So I guess that's how it's going to work this time. I think it's a better way of doing it than the previous time where it was based on just who had the highest points in the countries. And a lot of people felt like, well, that's not how you get the best of the best. And this is it. So it doesn't matter country wise. It could be three Australians, three guys from the US, whatever it might be. That's how it's going to pan out. And I'll keep you guys updated because there's two qualifying contests, as I said. One here through the 16th and 19th of May. And then Budapest will be 20th through the 23rd of June. So we will know at the end of June who's going to the Olympics. And when is that? Doesn't say. What if I type it in Paris 2024 Olympics? When is it? July 26th through August 11th. So I'll keep everyone updated. Hopefully this helps anyone who's searching for this information because before this and before the Bloom BMX posted this, there was nothing out there publicly in the BMX sphere. Now there is. Thank you, Bloom and Bia for posting this. Next, an ad. Next, we've got Killian Roth on Source BMX 
pro team with this really fun one minute skit with Tom and Van Homan. I think this is a cool way to do it and definitely just fun. So watch this to see how they announced him as the new rider. And then following that, we have a two minute lock in source BMX park edit with him following that. So they're both going to be linked right after each other in the description down below. And if anybody wants anything from this video, it's all linked in the description after the live stream ends. Will there be a live stream for qualifying events? I'm not sure. I hope so. And I really, really hope that it's not behind some stupid paywall or some ridiculous way of actually being able to watch it. Because in the past, like the feast events and things like that can be really, really hard to watch, especially if you're in the US where you just have to like use a VPN and set it to the right country and craziness like that. Like I hope there's just an easy way. And if it's behind a paywall, make it like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars at the max where you just put in your payment with a card. Boom. Right there's the video player. You can watch it. I hope that's how it works. Where's Noah? Probably stuck in a foof somewhere. I agree. He probably is stuck in a foof. Next, we have a video from Profile called A Sliver of Concrete in the Indian Ocean. Sebastian, I don't know how you pronounce this last name, from Profile. So it's Flatland, basically in an alleyway. And there's your Flatland video from this week until we get to, I think, there, yeah, there's one other Flatland thing this week. Next up. What's Hatton and Jam 2? We talked about the flyer for this, said it was going on. Here is the highlights video from it and everything that happened at that jam. Check it out. I agree, bodybuilding and BMX. I hope there's a way to watch it. I can't always watch these qualifying events with when they happen and things going on, but it's always cool when you get to watch them. And uh, big time, fingers crossed, that Simple Session, when they're back in the huge arena in Estonia, does the live stream that they've always done because that is like the staple for how you do a live stream of a BMX contest. It is fantastically done. Next, video from Animal with Isan Bogosian. Hope I said that right. Sorry if I didn't. Around the bend, lots of grinds on rails and ledges and some big drops. And there was one clip in here that I always just love when people do stuff like this. So let me see if I can find it. It was like a really quick grind down a rail and then a 360 down it right here. Oops. It's got a country song to it too, if you didn't hear that. So he's crooked down the rail and an immediate hop 360. And I think stuff like that just shows skill on a bike. If you can kink crooked grind a rail and then immediately land and be set up for a pretty big stair set three I mean that's one two three four five six seven technically eight ish seven and a half stairs which is not small by any means yeah if you can do the grind and land and immediately do that three and be ready for it I think it just shows skill on your bike so I always like seeing things like this kind of reminds me of like street trails where you just have to be ready immediately then next, probably the most underrated rider in all of BMX right now. Davy Osgood can basically do anything that he wants on his bike. He seems so dedicated, committed, and just like he rides as much as humanly possible that if he wants to land a trick, he's going to go until he gets it. Like this dude, when he had brakes on, was doing... He was doing like foof, ice, spin to the other ice. And then I think he even got one where he 270 would back out. It's just the technical ability that Davey has is incredible. And I'm happy to see him getting some love lately because he definitely deserves it. And if you don't know Davey Osgood's name, go watch this video. Check out his Instagram. I've seen this dude casually do some of the best stuff ever. He learned ice 270 lawn mowers out on my bike in like four tries if that gives you any context then we've got one with stranger and steven august called stuffies 
the song in this video seems, unless there's some like subliminal messaging going on, the song seems to be about stuffed animals, stuffies. And it's a little kid, it sounds like, singing it. Yeah, Caleb knows Davey is the best, most underrated rider, seriously. Then we've got a video from United with Jack Gruber, A While Between Drinks. This one's all black and white and street. Social media keeps him tucked away, sadly. I think it's partially that and just partially like he's self-filming a lot of stuff. And, you know, it's hard to have self-filmed clips look as good as filmed clips by somebody else whenever they can get super close and get the perfect angle for the entire trick. It's just harder. That's why it's so good when someone like Dan Foley is as good as he is at it. You know, not to say that Davey's bad at it. I'm saying that it's just hard to make stuff happen on the algorithm. I didn't even know Stranger was still around. You're probably not alone in that. Probably not alone. Stranger seems to have found their niche within BMX and they just... That's what they like. That's what they do. So the people who do know Stranger love them. But everybody else who has no idea or isn't super into that niche of BMX might not pay as much attention, which is not a bad approach to doing things, honestly. Next, Ikla Jordan Richardson Sprout. I met this kid at a breakfast spot. It might have been IHOP after Swamp Fest. They were, it was him and another dude with just their bike bags and their luggage, no car, no nothing. They had just made it happen on a trip to Swamp Fest. Oh, also guys, I forgot. I'm sorry. Random train of thought in here. I'm going to do the Q&A thing again this week. So if you guys have questions, put them in the chat. And then at the end, I'll scroll back through and I'll answer the questions until we get to 1030. So yeah, any questions, ask them now. I'll come back to them and read them through at the end. So yeah, met this kid. They were super nice and he's a shredder. So check out the video. Next, we've got Eric Elstrand, Super Smash Colorado, Eric and Rob DeQuatro. This one comes from Sunday and genuinely Eric Elstrand with Rob DeQuatro in videos are just some of my favorite videos of all time in BMX. Their split part that Scott Marceau made with that song from, is it Grease or something like that, was so fun to watch. I still love watching that video to this day. Their bike, uh, game of bike that they did, so much good stuff came from these two when they were hanging out and riding together all the time. And this is no exception, just an entertaining, fun to watch video all around. And Elstran is on one with how consistent he is at these hang 10, hang nothing, hang five grinds that he's been doing on real rails at that. Super good. Next up, we've got potentially BMX's next Prodigy. We got Sasha Cambon, happy face. This kid's 14. And as the description says, it this is accurate. God damn, this kid shreds. 100 percent He's only 14, but there's no little kid style here. Yes. Just grown-up moves on grown-up setups. His whip game is dialed to. Just yes. Watch this video. This kid, you'll watch it. And if you didn't know he was 14, you'd think he was like 20, 25 year old with how dialed he is. He literally does a flip whip off of the C bank, whatever those things are called in Barcelona. Here, if you weren't into watching this video, just from my description, I'll just play this for you. Where is it at? Right here. Watch this. He does a flip whip off of that. I mean, I get that it's a really nice lip to do something on, but he's 14 and doing that. Whatever. Also, another shout out to another 14 year old in BMX, Seth Udy here in Ohio. That kid, he's kind of like this and how good he's getting at such a young age. Watch the video. And remember, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the chat. Next, we've got 
2024 Drifter Snow Bikes Road Trip. This is just fun. Genuinely. It's just fun, you know? People riding snow bikes in the winter when they can't ride their bike bikes. And I enjoy watching things like this where it's, it's a BMX bike, but with skis on the bottom of it instead of tires. And people just having fun cruising down a mountain. I mean, you probably wouldn't take your BMX bike down a mountain the way you would a snow bike. So it's probably a totally different experience. And I bet it's really fun. How was Swamp Fest? I didn't want to, I don't want to answer that yet because it's not Q and A time. Keep asking questions. I just am so instinctively inclined to look at the chat and answer immediately. Next up, Kink BMX newest full length video called 30. They're celebrating 30 years in business. And this video is the celebration of that featuring Nathan Williams, Anthony Perrin, Jacob Cable, Santiago Laverde, Calvin Kosovich, Harrison, that last name, Anahi Valentina and Casey Starling filmed put together by Calvin Kosovich looks like and it's a 25 minute video Shoo-bud. so I've heard that this video is amazing who was it somebody in the chat said uh, Robert Burris at the very beginning said the kink vid was super awesome vid of the year already just in saying just in case I have to leave early so yeah if you watched it, let me know how it is in the comments after this goes live and I'll have to make a point to check it out. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie, Todd, I just kind of don't want to touch that on my channel. I'll, I guess I could since you asked about it, but I just kind of don't want to talk about it. Next, Rodney Williams, Long Link 1. So this dude, Rodney Williams allegedly because i haven't watched the whole thing all the way through but i'm sure somebody did but this is allegedly and i am confident in that it is or you wouldn't upload it a two hour long flatland combo so this dude is doing a flatland link for two hours i have no idea what it takes to do a flatland combo for two hours. But if you watch this all the way through, you'll see. I mean, I'm clicking through it right now. Obviously, it's all going to be the combo. <clears throat> it's crazy to think that it's uh, two hours long. The scene's out of bed. <laughs> no one's here, everyone. That is hilarious, Jay. Oh my gosh. Anyways, check this out. Kind of insane. And I would imagine the only person who could ever top this is probably him. And maybe he will. Next up, the only podcast that I think I saw this week in the BMX world was Canode Nose with Mike Mastroni. And if you didn't get your fix for BMX, podcast this week because this is the only one well this one's four hours long so you should get your fix based on that pretty crazy oh i just realized my notes are still sitting over here oops these all should have been more full screen than that anywho mike mastroni canode knows check it out if you need your podcast phil and that is the last thing that we have to talk about this week in the news. This is the type of ads that are showing up. Alibaba. Not really sure. I didn't click that, did I? All right. Anyways, BMX Union homepage. Nothing news there. We got some actual ads. And let's go to answering these questions. How was Swamp Fest? I couldn't tell you because I wasn't there. But it looks like it was chaos, madness, insanity looked like friday was amazing with good weather and everyone got to ride the course and the contest they got to go down and then saturday looked like you just had to let go entirely of any cares that you had in the world because it was raining all day long it was a mud hole pit because of swamp fest in the rain and it still looked like people had a blast so i hope people did I hope nobody got too messed up by the mortars that were going on all day long, which I feel like something's got to be done about that happening all day.
day long, it's fine at night. But when you're just trying to watch an event and then you're not even paying attention and a massive mortar just goes off in the middle of the crowd, like somebody's going to die. To put it simply, somebody is going to end up getting majorly hurt or dead. And then Swamp Fest might just have to end and that would really suck. But I get it. I get the whole like, let it happen nature of things. So uh, what do we got here? Did you learn tuck or suicide no handers first? Any pointers? I learned tuck no handers first, but I learned them going backwards. And actually, I have pictures from when I was first learning these. So I'll pull it up. Let's see. Yeah, I learned tucks first. And honestly, you don't need a lot of time to do a tuck no hander. So that would be the first thing I would pay attention to. Yeah, this picture is one of my favorites right here. This is from when I was first learning tuck no handers. And that's exactly where I learned them. That's the Lip Lord's Quarter. I was doing them fly out. So you can do them fly out suicide tucks. And I think the main thing to remember with it is just that like you don't need a lot of time. You don't need a lot of air to do the tuck you just gotta make sure that you land back tire first and then try to get at least one hand back on right away but you also can like work your way out to it you don't have to immediately go all the way out or back or up or however you're gonna do it you can just kind of spear fingers your way out to doing it all the way and then i think the best way to do tucks no matter which way you're going up out whatever is to lock your elbows if you feel that locking that means that your elbows and your hands went all the way out. And that was good. Oh, let's see. So Todd asked me what I think about the Capital BMX trying to host a jam in Cleveland. Seemed like a lot of locals were not fans of it. The only thing I'm going to say about this on the internet is that I don't know. There's no reason. I don't think there's any kind of particular reason why it should have to be in Cleveland. If everyone's pissed off that it's trying to be in Cleveland or Columbus or whatever major city, find another random city, contact locals directly and go from there. That's all I'm going to say about it publicly. There was a lot of people who were upset about it. I'm not involved. This is not my pig, not my farm. And I think that if approached correctly and just people talking together, it can be worked out. That's it. Let's see, what else do we have? Our local BMX scene got the early release for 30, had some DIY obstacles set up at my house and we made a party of it. That's awesome. That's cool that you just did it at your house too. Was the video good? I think I saw you say that you agreed about it being better video of the year already. James Ovens, question, how did you get into riding? What made you fall in love with BMX? So my neighbor growing up, <clears throat> Dustin, who's been in my videos a lot recently because he started riding again, he's the one who actually started riding before me and he's four years older than me. So when I was 12, he was 16. And when I was 13 and got my first real BMX bike, he was already driving. So had him around and him wanted to ride. So we would go and ride. And uh, it kind of really just actually check this out. Let me pull this back over. I have pictures from when I first started riding. Let me go into photos, albums in the beginning. In the beginning. Where are they? Well, apparently we're not going to get to see them because... Facebook doesn't want to show them. Well, whatever. Anyway, yeah, he got me into BMX. And so I got a BMX. I went to the skate park for the first time on this crappy bike that I'd just been riding around in my driveway doing like rolling no footers and rolling supermans and stuff like that. Took that to the skate park, left the skate park, went to the local bike shop and the the rest is kind of history ended up with a complete bike that night because my dad did some car work for the guy who owned the bike shop 
my uh the dude had me call my parents in they showed up worked out a deal and i rode back to the skate park on a brand new fit complete which is why it's so crazy that i'm now working with snm and fit and uh yeah i think i don't know what exactly made me fall in love with it it's just one of those things man it's just in me that's it how was Woodward Props Jam? Amazing. Such a good event. I think the cabins weren't open yet because of how cold the nights were for it. So I think they were a little bit limited on actual housing for the event, but it was still so good. And there were so many people there. I love that event. It's just fun. You ever watch Taj's Grounded Part? Probably. Probably. I don't remember though. Caleb, question for the end. Can we do another online Lip Lords game of bike? If somebody can help me organize it, yes, we could finish. We could start one and finish it. It's just time. Time is the only thing. So if we could figure that part out, sure. Grab your head tube with your knees. Never heard that. What's up, guys? He, 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 me funny. <laughs> okay. So good. Nathan Williams does so much gnarly stuff. Switch foot forward. Interesting. Is he doing opposite stuff with it? So it's like fully opposite footing and the trick. On King 30. Clearly just an opinion. Can we all talk about how that Billy Joel song ruined a video part from Nathan Williams? Bring back Daryl Taco. Man, I really hate that uh i hate when that happens i hate whenever there's like an amazing video and the song just like doesn't feel like it fits at all which it sucks because to the person filming and editing and maybe even to the person in the video it could feel like it fits perfectly but then you know people who aren't connected to it watch it and just they're like oh no this doesn't fit at all that's why when it comes to like edits and things like that on this channel if it's an edit of me i do not care about copyright i'm going to use the song that i want to use as long as youtube doesn't mute it and completely block it i don't care because when it comes to like an edit the song is so important and the feel from that song is what sets the tone for the entire video and I don't want to ruin it by having just some like instrumental that to make it cleared for copyright or anything like that. So it sucks, but it's one of those things, man, like the, the video editor could have thought it was perfect and then to other people it just didn't hit. So yeah, it can really suck. I'm sad the wheel mill closed, but the rumor was they might keep the woods room. Yeah, I don't know about any of the rumor stuff, but I was there for their last hour and a half on Sunday and it was sad. Felt like I was at a funeral and it was just a bummer, man. The very end there, I got a video coming. It'll probably come out this week. Definitely not going to post it on Saturday. I want to post it on a day where it could potentially get some more people watching it because it's just... I don't know. It's a bummer that it had to be, but I'm glad I was there for the last hour, hour and a half to capture it all. Like the entire chapters video, AKA elevator biking. <laughs> it really made me sad. All those bangers and all I could think about was this song. Yeah, it, it sucks when that happens. And there's probably people out there who say feel the exact opposite way. They're like, Oh, Billy Joel, Nathan Williams. This is awesome. But Sometimes for some people, it just doesn't hit. It's a bummer when that happens. What's the best trick you can do? Noah, answer that guy's question. What's the best trick I can do? I have no idea. Oh, anyways, another thing coming next week. I just remembered I wanted to talk about and make sure everyone knew my welcome to s and and fit video part is this close to being done i just have a couple tweaks i've got to do add a title to it and it will be done so it's gonna go live i believe on the snm channel and on this channel at the exact same time so that it can be on both and uh i'm pumped 
I got hurt in June last year, hurt my knee. So I was kind of keeping it, I was kind of keeping it chill for months. And there, I, it still didn't like hold me back because there was a couple things where I just didn't care and tried it anyways and ended up pulling it. But didn't get to film as much stuff as quickly as I wanted to. So now we're, we're here. Best is subjective. True. But the answer is Fufa News. Cool. Tell me what you need help with. I'm here for whatever. That was really fun. And it seems to test a lot of people what they can really do on a lip. Yeah, it's the Lip Lords game of bike was awesome. It's just when you have 64 people who are in a game of bike. So it's 64 tricks that are happening at a time or 32 tricks that are happening at a time and i gotta keep track of that and post it all and keep track of people's time and then there was the extensions on time like if i do that lip lords game of bike again there is going to be a three day hard cutoff if you can't ride in three days to get these clips or do the tricks then you get a letter it's that simple because giving people extensions and having everyone on different timelines was very very difficult if it's done again it's going to be done hard cutoffs stoked to finally see your edit thank you it's always foof news just one more ice pick how young are you i'm 30. there's a few ice picks in it there's only one flat out like ice pick straight up stall where it's just sitting there for a second but there's not a single like ice picks sitting in it variation type deal it's all just yeah you'll see i'm pumped on it i'm really pumped on it and i'll probably do like a breakdown type thing where i just go live and break down the video after it's been live for a week or two because there's a lot that went into it and i approached it a little differently than previous videos so with that with that being said, everyone, there's 40 people here. Shout out to all 40 of you. I appreciate you tuning in for the live. Shout out to Caleb Oni. He's a member in the chat, which means he's got these custom emojis, access to the members only Discord group, and he gets videos early. When I get videos edited and uploaded early, I schedule them and members get to see them before anybody else, at least the silver tier members and above. So with that being said, I'm going to jump out of here. I'm going to try and get some videos done for this weekend and then get my edit completely edited. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for one of them. Thanks for watching and have a good day, everyone.